Swinburne University of Technology. Hi everyone, in this video we are going to be looking at an introduction to quantitative data and we're going to be focusing on descriptive statistics. So when we're looking at quantitative data it can generally be classified in two different ways. So it can either be classified as metric or as categorical. So categorical is where we have groups or categories. Metric is where we have some sort of measurement to our data. Out of a typical questionnaire or survey, we normally have a little bit of a mixture of categorical and metric. It's important that we can make the distinguish uh, between these two as depending on what one we have will depend on what kind of analysis and what kind of descriptive statistics we will use. So descriptive statistics are going to be important uh, because they are the basic way of describing our data. Even if you're going to have a statistician analyze your data, it's still really valuable to be able to look at the data yourself and have a general understanding of means and percentages and basic graphs that tell me about my data. So a metric data is data which is measured and so things like age would be a common one that we would see in our uh, surveys. Uh, things like maximum temperature, amount of tax. Uh, another one which is often treated as metric is like at scale scores. So when we are looking at the responses that people have given for our multi-item scales, those are often treated as metric as well. Uh, on the other hand, categorical is where we are providing categories. Uh, sometimes the category might have a particular order to it, uh, in which case it's called an ordinal variable or ordinal data. Sometimes it might not, in which case we call it nominal. Sometimes we might have data which could have been recorded one of two different ways. So you can see there I have age group. If I have age groups, then those are categories. Whereas if I had age by years, we would be treating it as metric. So when I have categorical data, the two most common ways that I would present my data are by talking about frequencies and percentages. And so I have a little table there with frequencies and percentages. I've grabbed that one straight out of the SPSS software. Uh, normally we would take those figures and we would clean it up a little bit to put into any report that we're writing. We may want to display either the frequencies or the percentages visually, in which case we can use a bar graph to do that. Sometimes you may see a pie graph being used to show percentages, uh, and that's, that's okay, uh, although if we have too many slices in our pie graph, it starts to become a little bit meaningless. Something that's really important is if we are producing graphs, then we should never ever use three-dimensional graphs. If we're showing data on a two-dimensional surface, whether it's a piece of paper or a computer screen, the human eye cannot detect three dimensions correctly, and most software uh, does a pretty bad job of trying to create that artificial third dimension. What happens is your eye will start trying to detect volume instead of height and it will get very confused. When we're looking at metric data, uh, the two graphs that we would commonly use to look at our metric data are box plots and histograms. And then the statistics that we would normally talk about to describe our metric data uh, would be the mean, which is just adding up all the numbers, dividing by how many there are, and the median, which is the middle number when they're all in order, which we also can refer to as the 50th percentile. So half the numbers are above, half the data is below. Uh, sometimes we might look at our standard deviation, which is just a measure of spread. Uh, we might look at our quartiles, which is our 25th and our 75th percentile. And sometimes we might look at other percentiles. So we might be interested in, well, depending on the data, it could be all sorts. It could be the highest 1% or the lowest 1% or the highest 10% or the lowest 10%. So percentiles can give us other, other points throughout our data. 
So here's an example of a box plot. Uh, and so our box plot is showing us our minimum and our 25th percentile, which is our lower quartile, 50th percentile, uh, which is our median, 75th percentile, which is our upper quartile, and our maximum. And so it's most useful if we just want to have a very quick comparison of the centers and just the basic spread of our data. We don't know anything about the points in between 0 and 25, between 25 and 50, between 50 and 75. So it is only telling us about those five points. Uh, but it can give us a bit of an idea about uh, center and spread. So you can see in this example here, I have graphed uh, some Likert scale scores. And so we can see the title there, Importance of Convenience and then my three different categories of um, person works full-time, uh, does not work full-time, works full-time but lives with adults who don't, or all adults in the household work full-time. And if we look at the line in the center, so we've got, here's our median here, here's our median here, here's our median here, we can see the median, and in fact kind of the, the box overall, so the 25th percentile to the 75th percentile, uh, for this category, all adults in the household who work full-time is a bit higher. So that's giving me a bit of an indication that I think that the adults, households where the adults are all working full-time, convenience seems to be a little bit more important to them if we're assuming that this is a strongly disagree to strongly agree. So slightly higher scores, so it's uh, suggesting that importance and convenience uh, we would normally follow this up with statistical tests to really confirm that this is the case. But just looking at this graph, we're already getting a little bit of an indication uh, that convenience is more important to those particular households. Okay, so our other graph of interest, our histogram. So when we're looking at our histogram, we are seeing a set of bars, and the bars are representing how many uh, observations and so with surveys often how many people uh, fall within those particular intervals so if we're looking at this one with our hours of housework this first bar is telling me how many people do from zero up to but not including 10 hours of housework uh, I'm guessing per week um, it's not a very informative label it should probably be telling us what the time frame is so about the zero to ten 10 to 20, 20 to 30, and so we can see that most people are in the 0 to 10 and it decays off pretty quickly. One of the nice things with the histogram is we can see what we call the shape of our distribution. So I've got a list there, symmetric, bimodal, left skew, right skew, uniform, and so this one that we're looking at here uh, we would describe as right skew. We can see that most of the data here is fairly low, and then we've got a tail that goes off to the right. So there's a few, uh, small handful of people with these very, very high values, but most of the values are much lower. So this is an example of some right skewed data. Uh, so we are often interested in looking at histograms of our metric variables. You can imagine uh, age for instance we might look at the age of our participants and not only might we look at our age of our participants we might compare that to say census data and see whether we think that our ages are representative of our population of interest. We can also look at histograms uh, for our Likert scales and that will give us a bit of an idea of uh, the distribution of the opinions so the attitudes or the um, perceptions that people have. So here is an example uh, where we are looking at an attitude. So we're looking at importance of health. And so along the bottom here, we can see our scale scores, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and so this is looking, looking like one where you could answer in between your ones and twos and threes and fours and fives. Uh, and so we can see that there's not many people down here between one and two, but a lot of people up in the up in the threes and fours. So just looking at this distribution, we can see that health seems fairly important, at least kind of reasonably important uh, to most people. We've described this data as left skew. We've got most of the data here, 
and the tail kind of trails off towards the left a little bit. So if we have left skew data, we would expect the mean to be less than the median uh, because these low values, they're pulling the mean downwards. The median, remember, is that middle number, so that 50% 50, 50 person. Uh, it's probably a little bit hard for us to read off the scale to see quite how many people are in each of these groups, but if we counted through until we got to the halfway point, um, and I suspect the halfway point is somewhere, somewhere in one of these two, uh, then it's a fairly high median, uh, but if we were adding up all the fives and fours and threes and twos and ones, uh, all these ones and twos, they would be pulling pulling that mean down. So we'd expect the mean to be less than the median for left skew. Okay, so here is another uh, graph of uh, a Likert scale. And from the looks of this one, uh, the people could only answer with whole numbers. So it looks like we've got ones and twos and threes and fours and fives, perhaps. Or maybe zeros and ones and twos and threes and fours. So it looks like there's less, less likely that there was funny decimal ones in this one. Uh, so this dis uh, distribution we would probably describe as uniform. So uniform, uh, an absolute uniform descript, uh, distribution, all of these bars would be the same height. So there's an equal, equal number or equal uh, proportion of people in each of our groups. We can see it's not exactly like that, but it's pretty close. Uh, and so what we're measuring, we're measuring the importance of daily exercise and it seems to be pretty evenly spread. So we've got some people who think it's very important, some people who kind of not all that important, some people who think it's not important at all. So fairly, fairly even spread. I, I would say this is closer to a uniform distribution than any of the others. This has been a Swinburne production.